Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to today's video. So do not be confused by seeing such a big diagram. First of all, let's, let me just uh, you know give you a heads up. This is an easy diagram. It seems to be complicated. It is one of the most important and prominent industrial processes right now. You know the metal manufacturing process, or specifically the lead manufacturing or the lead smelting or the lead production process as you would like to call it so today we are going to talk about the lead smelting process in particular there is a chain or uh, you know value chain or supply chain before the smelting process or the production process starts which is uh, basically the raw material uh, uh, sourcing uh, uh, preparation of raw material in the mills uh, so I will just give a brief of how the raw material is prepared. So basically when I used to work for uh, Hindustan Zinc Limited, they are a zinc, lead and silver manufacturing unit. So basically the ore that uh, this company extracts is rich in lead and zinc and whatever ppm of silver is present is very very valuable as we know that silver is a uh, high value material so they definitely try to recover that silver and sell that silver in the market. Uh, so talking about the extraction process, so they have the ore uh, which consists primarily of zinc, lead and silver as the major metals but still the concentration is very very poor, maybe about 5-6% to 6 and then they need to enrich that ore uh, by several processes like uh, uh, grinding it off and then doing a froth flotation process to basically separate out the zinc and lead so that lead ore can be treated separately that is galena comes out separately from the mill and zinc sulfide comes out separately so PBS and ZNS are the two major component products that are separated by froth flotation after grinding in a ball mill so it's a milling process post which it is a froth flotation process post which uh, ore rich in lead comes at the lead manufacturing process and our ore rich in zinc goes to the zinc manufacturing process in the lead manufacturing process the silver is also present in the lead ore itself and not in the zinc ore when we do the froth flotation method the uh, lead uh, and the silver goes in entangled with one another and the, they are separated from the zinc ore so the uh, ore that comes from the mills we will start the process from here it comes from the mills and it is about having a concentration of about 55 to 60 percent of lead depending on the mill it is sourced from i will not tell the name of the mills and the concentration of each individual mill because that's a little confidential but you just know that it is about 55 percent of lead that usually uh, comes in from the mills in its raw form in its ore form in the form of PBS that is galena so PBS comes in from uh, the mills 55 percent of lead in it and goes to the RMH that is the raw material handling section so this is done raw material handling section what is the purpose of the raw material handling section is basically it stores all the mill materials that is from each mill whatever material comes in it stores it in hip and then the, it is transferred from the uh, in the raw material handling section only bins is an important part so as the production process goes on the feed to the furnace is continuously maintained with the help of bins so through the conveyor belts this ores in particular quantities are sent to the bins at a point of time there are n number of bins in the process involved with each bin having a different milk material and then there is a blend formation then there is a blend formation from different bins the ore material comes together to form a blend with a particular percentage of lead with a particular percentage of zinc with a particular percentage of the other minor metals and with a particular percentage of silver and with a particular percentage of carbon here carbon is the controlling factor because the percentage of carbon shouldn't shoot beyond the point because if it shoots beyond the point carbon dioxide is formed in the furnace which is a source of heat and to control that heat you know the furnace is made of certain material which can handle a certain amount of heat only so if the carbon percentage is excess of that amount the feed has to be reduced because the total quantity of carbon shouldn't exceed a certain quantity because then the exothermic reaction will give enough heat to damage the bricks of the furnace so the process is very very clear the bins a blend is formed from the multiple bins from the multiple mill materials such as to maintain a certain percentage of lead primarily along with the percentage of carbon it is it is maintained in the bins blend itself so very very important factor percentage of lead and percentage of carbon then from the bins through the conveyor belts the blend goes into the pelletizer what is happening in the pelletizer is 
it is in the powder form in the bins primarily because the mill material that comes in is the grinded mill material post which it has been through froth flotation method and post which it is dried and brought into the uh, armet section so the raw material handling section ends up with the bins itself here and the blend goes on this is the blend this is the blend that goes on to the pelletizer here the pellets are formed so that the uh, blend material is basically it is blended and it is uh, small small tablets pellets are formed of certain diameter with blending it with a bit of water so uh, the bins also has a supply of certain materials like iron ore limestone which are important to maintain the furnace chemistry we will not go into the details of the chemistry because those are internal processes as well and might not be that much required we will just focus on the process primarily i will just brief the reaction what takes place on that the majority reaction we will not talk about the side reactions here so in the pelletizers the pellets are prepared the pellets are prepared primarily to prevent the sticking of the powder together and to provide more surface area to the pellets so after the pellets pelletizer small pellets of the blend of the ore goes into the furnace now what is the ore pbs pbs that is lead sulfide so when the pbs goes into the furnace what happens what kind of reaction does take place please note it down i am not noting it down because it will be too clumsy here so basically when the pbs goes into the furnace as you can see from the bottom it is a bottom glowing oxygen count, uh, counter where 99.99% pure oxygen is sent from the bottom blown from the bottom and from the top pbs is coming in so now what is happening is pbs is reacting with oxygen what is forming is uh, uh, pbs uh, plus oxygen forming pbo plus so2 uh, so something of this sort is forming which is causing a, a replacement of the sulfide form with the oxide form of uh, pbo and then the further further feeding of pbs from the top is reacting with this particular uh, pbo to give sulfur dioxide and oxygen and 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 lead pure lead bullion so what is happening is if we primarily write the reaction it is pbs plus o2 forming pbo plus so2 now balance the reaction accordingly and then the next step is pbs the incoming pbs is reacting with the formed pbo so pbs plus pbo forming pb plus so2 so two materials are primarily formed the pbo and the pb now the pb is pure bullion it is about 97% pure lead from 55% in the pbs now we have prepared two kinds of material pbo and pb now pb is pure lead which is 97% pure and is called the lead bullion now why is it called the bullion bullion is something that has an important or a precious metal attached to it so the lead bullion here has the silver in the lead bullion as well the 97% is lead but uh, uh, some percentage of it some ppm of it has silver as well in it now that depends on the ore again i am not going to provide the details in the bifurcation but uh, uh, basically the lead bullion is uh, having some high 97% of lead and the rest of other minor metals like copper like uh, silver these kind of metals are there in the process now this lead bullion is basically taken loaded in trucks so they are a cubicles uh, cubicle almost tube shaped uh, Uh, bullions uh, that is kept in uh, that is that is uh, stored in this uh, in this vessels and they are extracted in the solidified form and loaded onto the trucks and then sent now the molten form is not sent because it can cause environmental pollution it can be a source of uh, lead vapors forming into the diffusing into the environment so it is solidified as lead bullion at the bottom pure lead 97% lead and loaded onto the trucks now what happens of the pbo that is formed in the process so pbo basically goes out as the slag from the primary furnace so this is the end of the primary section where the pelletizer is pelletizing it forming pellets and then it is going to the furnace giving rise to so2 formation which further goes into the acid plant you can uh, refer to the acid manufacturing video for uh, the reference to what happens to this particular so2 however what happens to the pbo slag it goes on to the next section that is the secondary section because this further has some pb which needs to be recovered so primarily pb is recovered in the primary section which is the uh, primary furnace here Uh, we collect the pb 97% pb and we transport it through the trucks we will go to where it is been transported we will come to that section the next section is uh, the blast furnace which is collecting basically the slag now what is happening of the slag it has pbo in it 
Now what happens in the blast furnace is coke and lime is fed from the top. Now lime is basically fed to separate out the PBO.SiO2 that is uh, PBO basically remains in the PBO form in the slag combining itself with uh, the silicate ion that is SiO2 ion. So it is a formula of PBO.SiO2 it, it is a bond and as we feed the lime the CaO takes care of the SiO2 from CaSiO3 and it separates also SiO2 and PBO is free for reaction now. Once the PBO is free for reaction, what we do is we feed the PBO and we feed the coke. Coke is pure carbon. So again note down the reaction PBO plus C. PBO plus C my friends gives PB plus CO and continuous supply of O2 is given from side blowing. So side blowing pure O2 is given which is again combining with that CO to form CO2. So what is happening is carbon is being fed, it is taking away the oxygen of the PBO and is forming CO which is further converted into CO2 and the PB is left alone. So the PB comes at the bottom which is collected again as lead bullion with 97-98% purity and again loaded onto the trucks in the solidified Q form uh, in the bullion shape. However, some amount of PBO and other minor metals still remain in the process and needs to be recovered further. So the slag that is formed is again primarily PBO that is unconverted PBO which is not converted into PB reacting with the coke. So what happens of this slag? This slag goes into an electric arc furnace. So we realize that after the blast furnace, the slag further goes into the electric arc furnace. Now, what, how does the electric arc furnace behave here? It is kind of a batch reactor. I would not even call it a reactor. It is basically a holding furnace. It holds, it has a certain capacity. It holds the uh, material there, Let, lets the uh, heavy PP settle down. It is called an electric arc furnace because the temperature there is maintained at a certain level using the electric arcs and the PB, the heavy PB is led to settle down and the PBO slag is further taken into the fuming furnace chamber. Now fuming furnace chamber is again a batch reactor chamber because of which since blast furnace is a continuous process and almost a continuous or semi semi batch you can call a process and fuming furnace is a batch process uh, it 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 needs to have a stagnant reactor in the stagnant holder in the middle so electric arc furnace behaves as a holder which holds the uh, 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 slag coming out of the blast furnace but doesn't immediately transfer it to the fuming furnace so electric arc furnace uh, acts as a holder which maintains the temperature such that the lead doesn't solidify it remains in the molten form now when that lead along with some zinc along with some other minor metals comes to the fuming furnace what do we exactly do we feed in coal from the top this time also we are feeding in carbon but this time in the fuming furnace we are maintaining a temperature of 1800 degrees celsius 1500 to 1800 degrees celsius which is above the boiling point of lead and zinc now you understand that what is above the boiling point lead and zinc will con be converted into vapors so lead and zinc oxide in the slag reacts with the coal coal takes away the carbon takes away the oxygen pb and zn is left and pb and zn basically tries to fly off so pb and zn vapors try to fly off the fuming furnace chamber at the exit Again, oxygen is injected and the PB and ZN vapors react with that oxygen, gets cooled down, forms PBO and ZNO and settles down as dust. And the rest of the minor metals are remaining at the bottom with minute percentage of PB and ZN and this slag is then dumped because this cannot be recovered further. It has very uh, less percentage of lead and if we go for further recovery, we will lose out on capital. So whatever lead oxide and zinc oxide we needed, we take it out of the fuming furnace. Now you would question, but this is not pure lead. How will we utilize this ZNO or PBO? It is either re fed into the chamber, uh, into, the, uh, into the bins and pelletized and fed into the furnace again uh, as a recycle stream as a recycle stream is goes back or 
or from the lead oxide and zinc oxide we have multiple uses in the acid plant as well i have explained that in the acid manufacturing unit in the tail gas treatment plant we need zinc oxide dust we use it there so it have find this multiple uses in the plant itself if we have to recover back the pbo and zno we refeed it into the furnace at the beginning step so the primary furnace and that completes the secondary section of the loop as well so primary uh, done lead bullion is formed secondary done lead bullion is formed and then fuming furnace uh, which is a part of the secondary unit basically forms the pbo and the zno dust uh, which is formed from the lead and zinc vapors and rest of the slag is dumped or is used for other purposes and is not recoverable now what we see is where does this lead bullion go where does the pure lead that comes out of the bottom after it is freed of the oxygen and the sulfide the pure lead that is 97% 98% pure you told that it is taken in the form of cubes and loaded onto the trucks but where do the trucks go the trucks goes to the minor metal recovery uh, minor metal removal or minor metal recovery chamber where the copper the other the bismuth all of these materials that are the uh, that are the impurities in this particular lead 97% is lead but rest 3% is a kind of distributed some amount of it is carbon some amount of it may be iron some amount of it is definitely silver some amount of it is zinc some amount of it is bismuth some amount of it is antimony now what this does is antimony bismuth copper these are impurities if somebody is ahead of lead in the electrochemical series when we actually do the electrolysis process it will travel faster than lead from the anode to the cathode to get deposited which is not desired by us because we want the cathode to be pure lead so we need to remove the impurities that is above the lead in the electrochemical series fully also the presence of antimony kind of strengthens the anode helps it hold together so the antimony shouldn't be removed beyond a further point so there is a proper composition of the anode that is to be casted uh, so that it maintains the strength as well as it doesn't travel to the cathode itself so we ensure that in the minor metal recovery chamber in the minor metal recovery chamber we basically remove this uh, copper uh, these antimony this bismuth to the required quantities we keep it how do we do it we feed iron pyrites what iron pyrites does fes2 reacts with copper cu to form cu fes2 that is copper pyrite so in proper quantities we feed this iron pyrites and additional metals to maintain the concentration of the minor metals in the anode and then it is sent to the anode casting machine my friends so after the minor metal recovery the lead along with certain minor metals in certain composition and obviously silver which is a very important ingredient goes into the anode casting now, now this anode has lead silver copper bismuth antimony uh, uh, iron a lot of it in small small proportions and now what happens this anode is dipped in, dipped in an electrolysis solution along with a pure sheet pure sheet this sheet you see is a pure sheet of co copper which is a thin sheet and the anode is a thick sheet having impure lead so a pure sheet of lead sorry i told copper the previous time i think it is the cathode is a pure sheet of lead the anode is an impure sheet of lead and this is called the electro refining process there is an electrolyte i cannot mention what electrolyte is it it is but definitely it has lead ions in it what happens is from the anode the lead ions in the form of pb2 plus comes into the solution so pb minus 2 electrons pb2 plus comes into the solution from the solution pb2 plus goes to the cathode takes two electrons and gets deposited there like this pure pb pure pb is getting transferred from the impure anode to the pure thin sheet of cathode now over a particular time and over a series of anodes and cathodes what happens is continuous deposition takes place the cathode gets thicker and thicker with pure lead of 99.995% uh, purity and at the anode we only find the anode mud now this anode mud is deficient of pure lead lead is already gone so what is dominating is 
25% AG that is 25% silver now here comes the gameplay we further sent it to one of our silver recovery units which recovers the silver and sends back the lead to us and the silver is sold from there so you understand that the anode mud that remains is primarily silver and is used for silver recovery whereas the other metals uh, that is the uh, minor metals are also present in the anode mud and is removed in the silver recovery process whereas the lead is collected at the cathode forming a cathode of pure lead which is further sent to the casting and melting so melting and casting m and c we call it section where it is molded in the form of metal bars of 1000 tons of 100 tons of 10 tons of 50 tons as per the requirement of the customer and this is where my end product is after casting and melting i sell those metal bars to the customer so let's reiterate the process from the mills we get 55 percent lead and with other metals in a fine powder form goes to the rmh goes to the bins distributed from multiple mill materials blend forms maintaining a certain percentage of lead and percentage of carbon and other uh, materials as per the furnace chemistry required goes to the pelletizer forms pellets goes to the primary furnace reacts with oxygen gives out so2 gives out pbo gives out pb the pb gets loaded on the truck the pbo goes to the blast furnace reacts with coke gives pb the further pbo that is unreacted goes into the electric arc furnace holds there goes to the fuming furnace vapors out reacts with oxygen forms pbo and zno dust here and the rest of it is slag down the pb that is extracted from both the primary furnace and the brass furnace is sent through trucks to the minor metal removal uh, section where the metal uh, con composition is taken care of the anode is casted it is then sent to the electrolysis or electro refining unit where the majority of the reaction takes place the pb from the anode goes transferred to the pure sheet of cathode where the cathode is the ultimate product we cast and we melt it we cast it according to the mold required by the customer and we send we then sell the lead bars the anode mud is then for sent for further recovery of silver from it to one of our silver recovery units and that basically defines the lead production or smelting process so that was it from my end today hope you have understood the process hope you liked the uh, show we are going to bring more lectures like this till then like the page uh, subscribe to our channel hit the bell icon for regular updates and share it with your friends thank you very much